What's up guys, WWE Stage Creator back again with another video. Today I'll be giving you my review of WrestleMania 36 Night 1. Hope you guys like the new intro for the channel. Shout out to cool WWE mashups for helping me make that intro. But getting into the show, going into it, we knew it was going to be Empty Arena. It was going to be pre-taped and it was going to be from the Performance Center. And my expectations for this were a little bit, you know, down because, you know, it was two nights of WrestleMania, which is in theory cool, but it felt like it was filled with filler matches. And we'll get into that, but... This show, half of it sucked, and half of it was actually really, really good, and we'll get into it. So, at the start, we're not going to talk about the kickoff, because I didn't watch that, but I knew Cesaro won. I don't know what happened with the women, but getting into the start of the show, we had Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss beat the Kabuki Warriors for the Women's Tag Team Championships, and I thought this was a really weird way to start the show. I mean cool baby faces win to start the show and whatever but having the women's tag team championships that nobody really cares about start the show kind of sucked and it was really boring really boring way to start off the show the match wasn't very good for me i don't know how you guys felt about it comment down below let me know if you liked it but i didn't really like it and kind of a uh, bad way to start the show then we had elias versus king corbin not much build up to this match and not much hype for me but Elias won as I predicted and yeah he just I think he rolled up Corbin can't even remember the match was boring and another match boring to start off the show so not a very good start for this Wrestlemania then we get into the women's championship and I'm so glad that this match didn't main event because it seemed like it was going to main event but I'm glad it didn't but this match actually surpassed my expectations they actually did a really good match here and surprisingly Becky Lynch wins and it's not super surprising because you know they like to keep Becky Lynch strong she's kind of the face of the company right now but I thought Shayna Baszler would beat her, that'll probably happen at a later time, but yeah, Becky Lynch retains and they'll probably continue the feud. Then we had Sami Zayn versus Daniel Bryan, we all expected Daniel Bryan to win the Intercontinental Championship, but that did not happen, Sami Zayn retained with the help of Cesaro and Shinsuke, and not too surprising, once I got into the match I started to think about it, yeah, Sami Zayn probably should retain, save Daniel Bryan winning for when there's a crowd and also Sammy just won the title and he's actually really good with the title so I think keep it on him for a bit longer also a giveaway coming for one of these Intercontinental Championships for the figures stay tuned for that then we had an awesome triple threat Smackdown Tag Team Championship match and The Miz was sick so they had John Morrison versus Kofi versus Jimmy Uso because you know Miz was sick you don't want to do like a handicap for John Morrison. So they did a uh, triple threat. I believe that's like a first time ever thing having triple threat like one versus one versus one for tag titles. And this match was really, really cool. John Morrison did some awesome stuff. He did this amazing like flip off the top of the post onto Jimmy Uso, who was like on a ladder on the second rope. Really awesome stuff. And John Morrison won the title. It was a really unique finish. They were all on top of the ladder and they all unhooked the championship. They were playing tug of war. And then Jimmy Uso and Kofi actually teamed up to get rid of Morrison and hit him with the title. But Morrison pulled down both of the titles and fell on a ladder and he retained the championship. Really, really smart finish there. And then we had the Universal Championship Braun Strowman, who was filling in for Roman Reigns because Roman Reigns has a compromised immune system because of his leukemia. So he didn't want to show up for WrestleMania because it'd be bad for him just in case he caught the coronavirus. But Braun Strowman was the replacement and he beat Goldberg. I expected Goldberg to win so that do Goldberg reigns again. But I'm glad Braun Strowman won. It's about damn time. Not really that big of a fan of Braun Strowman at the moment anymore. But, you know, Braun Strowman wins, Roman and Braun will have a really good feud just like in 2017, and Goldberg wouldn't even be able to beat Braun, he can't even hit the jackhammer on someone Braun's size at this age, so Braun Strowman won, good, it was quick, as it should be, and yeah, Braun Strowman is your new Universal Champion, also before this, actually, it was Kevin Owens versus Seth Rollins, and this match... They just had a normal match and then Seth hit him with the uh, ring bell 
and then it was a disqualification. Owens then challenged Seth to a no DQ match. That a no DQ match and Kevin Owens went up to the top of the WrestleMania sign and then hit like a, I think it was like a senton onto Seth Rollins through the table. Amazing, awesome WrestleMania moment for sure. That was really, really cool. Great use of the surroundings. The table was padded, but you know, whatever. It was a really cool spot. Great WrestleMania moment. Owens gets the win, as I predicted, at WrestleMania. By the way, Rollins' attire, the white attire, was fresh as. That was awesome. Glad to see him back in the white attire. Hopefully, we get an awesome figure out of it. So at this point, the show was all right. Half of it sucked. Half of it was pretty decent. But then we get to the main event. The main event was freaking awesome. Holy moly. This match was amazing. This honestly may be one of the greatest WrestleMania matches of all time, seriously. This was filmed like a movie, it was amazing, the storytelling was incredible, it was shot really well, it was so fun, oh man, this was absolutely insane. Man, I could go into detail, but like, this, you have to go watch this, if you, if you don't watch anything on the show, go watch this, this was absolutely insane. But The Undertaker gets the win over AJ Styles in the first ever Boneyard match. And if, if we're doing empty arena shows for a while, we should do more stuff like this. Because this was awesome. And expect that with the Funhouse match tomorrow. Cena and Fiend will be in some other location. But this was incredible. Undertaker, the, that was so cool. It was a badass. Like, it was really, it was like a gunslinger movie. It was like really cool. Taker was really, really awesome in this. AJ Styles was awesome too. Man, the acting was really, really great. And... They just put on a hell of a show. The editing, the, oh man, everything that was involved with this was so, so awesome. AJ Styles gets buried alive and The Undertaker stands tall as the winner. If Undertaker retired right here, I would be fine with that. Cause this was an amazing match and he just rode off into the sunset on that motorbike. Man, this could be the last match of The Undertaker, and I hope it is, because this was amazing. This is something you will definitely remember from this WrestleMania. This and the Kevin Owens jumping off the WrestleMania sign, definitely what you will remember from WrestleMania in years to come. That was my review of WrestleMania 36, night one. Tune in tomorrow for night two review. Thank you guys for watching this video. Please like this video. Comment down below what you thought of WrestleMania 36 night one. Comment all that down below. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And I will see you guys on the next video.